From time to time, we get calls from clients saying that the doors look beautiful, but they're out of square or they're twisted, when the reality is the doors are actually good, but the frame has been installed incorrectly. So the purpose of this video is to show you how to install a frame correctly so you don't have any issues with the doors. Here we have a mock door frame and we can see that we've placed the doors inside, all the gaps around here are parallel. So these doors are perfect doors and the frame would be fitted perfectly. Now the, there's three situations where you can have a problem. One is called rhomboid which is basically uh, the jams or the uprights of the frame aren't plumb. So if the frame has been put in out of plumb, you get a rhomboid situation and you can see the doors look as though they're out of square. So if you move the frame back, everything lines up. The second situation is where the doors can look as though they're twisted. If we put these wedges in on the corner to resemble a twist, we can see if we now look at the doors, they're flush at the bottom and they stick out at the top. So there the doors look as though they're twisted. But again, in reality, the frame is actually being fitted incorrectly. The third situation is hourglassing. This is where the frame is pushed in at the centre on either side of the four edges and causes the gaps to close or appear out of square. This is best shown, especially in a model of this size, by using a clamp to exaggerate the effect. Here we see the door begin to rub on the sill. The hourglass effect becomes more of a problem with the head and sills of a bifold and the jams on a double hung window. The common cause for the problem is fitting the weatherboards too tightly to the jams and what this does is cause the jams to be pushed in towards the centre. This can also happen with brickwork. If you have an hourglass situation, the sash won't move at all because what's happened here is the frame's been pushed in on either side so there's no room for movement. We can see that by putting a straight edge up against the frame. It's tight at the bottom, it's tight at the top and you have a gap in the middle. OK, so we've put a frame in position here so we can actually have a look at the problems in full scale. Uh, if we look at the top here, everything, all the gaps are nice and even because everything's nice and plumb. If we actually push the top over, the frame now goes out of square and the doors look as though they're out of square. But in reality, what we've got is an out of square frame and square doors. If we put the frame in the opposite direction, the doors look out of square again. Once again, we put it back into the centre the frames fitted off correctly, then the doors are actually fitted perfectly. One of the most common problems that we have is people saying that the doors are twisted. If we actually twist the frame here, we can see how the door looks twisted at the top and it stays in position at the bottom. But this is actually because the frame isn't installed correctly. If we put the frame back into the plumb position, no twist, the doors will actually fit perfectly. What we've got here is the worst door that we could find which actually does have a warp. We've laid the door down on a flat surface and if you look down here at the very end you can see what constitutes a warp. The Australian standard allows for a 5mm warp in a 2040 by 820mm standard door before it's considered a defect. As the door size increases, the allowable warp also increases proportionally. Installations vary depending on the construction of the house. The idea of this video is to show you how to install a basic frame so we won't get involved with flashings and sealants. These are important but that's up to your installer to look after those. So this is how the pre-hung frame arrives on site. We have uh, a block of timber at the top and a block of timber at the bottom to stop the doors actually moving. You might look at the gaps and think well they're not actually equal at this stage but uh, that isn't a problem because the doors aren't fitted, the frames can move around anywhere. Once the frame's put in position and fitted off correctly, the gaps will be even. What we have here is a plastic packer. They're also known as shims. So you can use plastic or you can use timber. Either way, they both do the same job. So what we're doing here now is we're measuring the width of the frame. We see that the frame is 1730. We measure the width of the door frame, which is 1700. We look at the difference between the two, in this case it's 30 millimetres, so we have that, 15 millimetres, that's the thickness of the first shim or packet that we put on this side to get the frame in level and plumb. We've fitted a 15 millimetre shim at the top and we've fitted a 15 millimetre shim at the bottom. We've now put the frame in and we've put the level in place to check for plumb. We can see by the bubble that the uh, frame actually is perfectly plumb, so it's ready to be fixed. If the frame was out of plumb, then we could pack it a little bit more at the top or pack it at the bottom. 
So what we're going to do now is uh, remove the door stops. The reason we do this is because we're going to hide all the frame fixings behind the stop. That way you get a nice neat finish. And once you've made sure that the uh, jam is plumb, you need to make sure that the uh, sill across the bottom is level. We would recommend that the frame is fixed with galvanised button screws rather than using a nail gun, as this can distort the frame. So what George has done is aligned the uh, inner face of the frame with the plasterboard, yeah. and he'll do the same at the bottom. So we put the batten screws in as a temporary measure, they aren't all the way in, because what we need to do now is use shims to pack the frame and make sure that it is absolutely perfectly plumb. Now the packers have been put in down the sides, he's screwed off the uh, batten screws to make sure everything's nice and tight and fits well, and now he's just rechecking for plumb. We've got one side of the jam there nice and plumb, we know that the sill is nice and level. He's put the uh, batten screws in as a temporary fix, He'll check to make sure it is plumb. George is packing this side with shims and making sure that this side's nice and plumb too. We need to fix into the sill, down into the concrete and make sure that everything's nice and level. The best thing to do here is to hide the fixing point, is to where the flush bolt on the door lines up with the strike plate, that's where you need to put the fixing screw, then eventually the plate will go over the top of the screw. So we fitted off the jams, they're nice and plumb. We've closed the doors, we see that the gaps around the doors are nice and equal. The only thing we have to do now is secure the seal and the head. Okay, the head's now fitted. What we do is we close the doors and make sure that all the gaps are equal. Gaps all around are equal. We'll get the door stops, put the door stops on, put the architrave on and that'll be the job finished.